But to talk about test three for 214, it is a standard test. So it's the usual fare, 25 multiple choice. I cleaned up things a bit in terms of the questions. Um, the only big difference between test one and two and, and versus three, one, there's, it's not referring to anything from 213. Like, you know how, because there's circular motion in test two material. So you gotta know about that. But for test three, it's all lenses and light and stuff. So there's nothing I can test on. Believe me, I tried. But, so there's nothing weird coming from a previous year. The other thing is, is that the multiple choice goes A, B, C, D, E rather than A, B, C, D. All, but the fifth one is usually a nonsensical one or none of the above. And it's almost never none of the above. Um, that, what? Sometimes, but most of the time it isn't. Except for tomorrow. Um, problem one, problem two, problem three, um, appetizer, standard. Uh, let me just go over. I know thin lens or mirror. It's the standard situation. A third of the class, actually two thirds of the class are gonna get a mirror, the other third is gonna get a lens. The lens or mirror may be convex or concave. You will have to know what a diopter is. You will be able to, out, you will be, have to apply correctly the description of the lens and mirror and diopter strength to the focal length. Basically that the diopter is the inverse of focal length. Yeah, diopter is an inverse meter. So if I say it is four diopters, the focal length is one fourth of a meter or 25 centimeters. So you need to convert it from diopter to meter to centimeter. In the lens problem, the standard unit that's understood for length, object, or I'm sorry, focal length object image are all in centimeters. Keep it in that. Uh, and then once you get the image, give me the magnification and then describe it. Left or right of the lens mirror wall. Is it real? Is it virtual? Is it upright? Is it uh, inverted? Is it uh, enlarged? Is it reduced? Describe it. Those four pairings I want. Um, and then a two ray diagram. Don't get over focused on the two ray diagram. Bring a ruler. Rulers are allowed. Don't bring those rulers with all the unit conversions and equations written all over it. Just a generic wooden ruler or the plastic rulers that I have. Yes. If you, if you want to draw that third ray, more power to you. I'm just saying you don't have to draw all three. That's the big thing. Which two you decide is up to you. I give it to you. I'm a, I'm a giver. I give you choice. Can we draw all three of us? No. Just about your freaking red shirt. <laughs> now, let me tell you the purpose of the, le the ray diagram. It is to test your understanding of what that magnification is. The graders will know if you say magnification is negative two and that image is smaller and upright, you've got problems. Yes? So if you want all of our answers in centimeters, unlike the, um, like the film problem. That film, I'll probably give you my preferred uh, unit. I will say this, you could never be wrong. I don't know how petty they would be, but I would overrule the graders. If I, if you give an answer in meters and I say centimeters, I'm not going to, I'll, I'll give you points if they take it off. 
Um, some of them. <laughs> now, there is. Yes. Everything else is effectively derived by the image distance and the magnification. Like everything you get, everything that you understand. This is the the lens mirror problem is like the mirror lens problems in all the other tests. It's just given an object, given a power of the of the lens or mirror. Where's the image? What's the magnification? And describe it and draw a two ray diagram. Bam. I'm not. It's not the problem where. Your image is, is real and inverted. It is located here. Figure it out. Like it's not, it's, it's a very straight, it's the straightforward mirror lens problems. Like in the problem sets. Not that weird one in the back, like the last one. There's the one right before the rapid fire. It's not that one. Look it up. It's in there. Do you even do the problem sets? What is it? Yeah, I do all the problem sets. Okay. All right. Watch my videos like the Zapruder film and just, uh, you don't know what the Zapruder film is? Hold on. Show of hands. Who knows what the Zapruder film is? Only one person in the room knows what the Zapruder, 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 am I pronouncing it right? It's the JFK shooting video, and it's, they literally go, there are people, there are uh, conspiracy theorists who watch it frame by frame. So I'm doing an analogy that basically saying you're studying really hard. Okay. And that's when I failed the class and set the room on fire, except for her, who knew what I was talking about. Okay. Nice recovery. I accept. Is Is what? I would say yes. Draw what? No. So appetizer. Appetizer is a quick in and out problem. Given, given some initial intensity, given some final intensity, describe the angles between the lenses, blah, blah, blah. Very meh. Um, single double slit. You will, oh, not stit. I don't even know what that means. You'll have to come up with either lambda, m, uh, distance for so many, all sorts of numbers and stuff that you can get out of it. Could be the number of stripes or bands or whatever. Could be what the M values are. And then thin film. And that's really just kind of it. Yeah. Yesterday. Yesterday morning, where we had the two different EMs and we set up a little table where we had the two extra Yeah. Would there ever be a situation where we would like to work in that same way instead of doing the EMs, we would do like the L's? You know what I mean? I think I would have to give you more information. You have to give me both EMs. Yeah, I would have to give you. Yeah, I would have to give you both M's for you to find the L in that situation. I'm not really sure. All right. So those are the problems. Uh, I would say people are always ask about. Well, how do I study? Well, one is for the multiple choice. Look at Tuesday's lecture and Friday's tutorial. 
I've been busy doing what exactly <laughs> that. I've been doing like I've been in Columbus all day today. Um, there's nothing new with the multiple choice. Multiple choice. I kind of clean. I kind of cleaned it up a bit, kind of polished it a little bit, but nothing new. Um, so look at those two lectures, and then then you've pretty much seen all the multiple choice, effectively. Um, for the problems, I would then look at the test reviews. The tutorials. I get this email every semester. I haven't gotten it this semester, but I think I've prevented it. And, or you guys have figured it out. The tutorials are the solution sets. Really, if you can get to the equations, Plugging it in, if two people can plug in the numbers and they get the same answer, congratulations, that's the answer. That's why homework is only 10%. Um, and then I would look at the lecture notes. If you feel adventurous, you could go back like la last year and look at the test three review that I gave back then. Um, there were no test reviews over the summer last year because my the other camera was broken. But um, you can look at previous semesters and see the test reviews and just see how it goes. And if you want to look at more multiple choice, go back there and take a look. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Mm. And then I think that would be it. I wouldn't go farther back. Honestly, I would look at last summer's test, last spring's test, and then that would be it in terms of earlier. There are some crazy people out there who beg, borrow, and steal and make full copies of every single test I've ever gave. No, it's more than two years back, the form of the test changes so much that it's not, it's not worth it. Um, so ask away. Oh, oh, look at that too. Okay, fine. So soon. Look at 215 and 220, 2015, 2016. I forgot. 2016 <laughs> videos don't exist for the summer. So that's why I, yeah, okay, fine. Then take a look at, yeah, I misspoke. Yes, over on the right. No, the what? No diffraction gratings in terms of the multiple choice. Quick question. Do I care about the minimums in a diffraction grading? No. What do I only care about in diffraction gradings? The maximum. What is the, D, the value of, how do I derive D in a diffraction grading equation? You effectively take the width of the slit and divide it by the number of slits in it. So if, if they say 10,000, if they say 10,000 slits per centimeter, then you basically invert that. So it's one centimeter divided by 10,000. I would change this into a meter, 0.01 divided by 10,000. And then that's the width in meters. Yeah, I would say with, uh, with single double slit with thin films convert everything into meters. Use meters. And then if I ask for the answer in a particular unit, only then change it. So light, now granted, light and thicknesses are typically given in nanometers or it depends on the numbers given, sometimes micrometers. I would say give it to me in meters and oh, let's just not, unless I wrote, I don't remember specifically what I wrote down in terms of what are the units that I want. Yeah, if I, if I, but the question is when I say what's the thickness parentheses in millimeters, close parentheses, it's fairly clear what I answer I wanted. Starting from the back, one, two, and three, one. 
No, compound lens will be on the final. Two. All right, three. Some, someone over here. All right, so all three questions were the same. One, two, three, one. Snell's Law is a possibility. S Snell's Law, one sine theta, one into sine theta, two. Yeah, it's like this. It could be like you're going from water to air. Index of refraction of water is 1.33. What's the critical angle? So water to air, air is one, critical angle is 90 degrees, so that's one. So one over N2 is sine theta two. So theta two is inverse sine of one over N2. If that is at the critical angle, the light travels parallel. If the angle is less than the critical angle, what does it do? Refract or reflect? If the angle is less than the critical angle, it will refract. If it's greater than the critical angle, it will reflect. So at, at steep angles, it does this. At critical angle, it does that. Anything greater, it does this. There were two, yes, one, two, three, one. So to get a virtual image, I'm going to need an image distance that is less than zero. Uh, image distances are typically one over F plus one over uh, O, I'm sorry, minus. The best way to get a virtual image off a mirror, use a convex, lint, or a convex mirror, because F for a convex mirror is negative, so we'll say negative 10. So this is one over negative 10 minus, I'll set the object distance as, I don't know, uh, eight. So minus one eighth, so minus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.125 or, minus 0.225 inverted, and that gives me what? Say it again. And All right, negative 4.44 centimeters. So the object distance is eight, the image distance is negative 4.44, the magnification is negative, negative 4.44, over eight, which means it is positive, what? A little, a shade over 0.5. Let's just say 0.6-ish. Give me the number. 0.555? All right, 0.55. So magnitude is less than one. Magnification is greater than zero. So this is an upright, reduced image. Image distance is negative. Virtual, it's a mirror, a virtual image for a mirror, so it's to the right. So I'm gonna sketch it and ballpark the, the rays. It's a little sloppy. Uh, focal length, negative 10. So F prime is there. Object is eight. Image is negative 4.44. So it's about here. 
the ob its image is 0.55 so if that's the object then that will be about the image first ray through the mirror center and it reflects so this angle is the same the ray traces back done second ray starts parallel it's a convex mirror so it diverges away from the focal point So the ray goes like that. The third ray, the tricky ray, it ends up parallel. So it got it has to become parallel and do this. So what you do is you aim that point like that. So that, that, and that are all on the same line. It becomes parallel. So actually that is solid. And those are the three rays. Look in the optics notes and you can see this being done. Yes, one and two. One, uh, you don't lines, no, I don't care about dotted lines. Yeah. Well, dotted lines do help. If it's a virtual image, you have to. If it's a real image, you don't. A micrometer or micron? Yes. Great. Uh, what do you mean by max reflectance and Max reflectance is basically saying it appears bright. So constructive interference. One and two. One. The magnification is what? The magnitude of the magnification lets you know if it's enlarged or reduced. If the magnification is greater, magnitude is greater than one, it's enlarged. If it's less than one, it's reduced. That is a subtle art. If it's been reduced, the biggest object I draw is the object itself. And then I scale down to what other refraction. If it's been enlarged, I draw the image as the large Im it, uh, image as the largest virtual construct and then I divide by the magnification to get the approximate size of uh, what the object should be so I would draw if the if the magnification is three I draw the image and then draw an object that's one third of the size and that's how I would do it over here yes single slit okay Be what? Should a single be like super thin and double? Should a single be super thin Yeah, maybe. I can make it difficult because in the single slit, remember I did the angle above, angle below, that kind of weird stuff. Um, can you do an example of a Not right now because I'm answering whatever. Hold on, remind me. I'm going to do a single slit? Yes. What kind of single slit? <laughs> That's an interesting fact. It's a shame that I've written the test. Um, <laughs> I would say for, um, all you had to do was say what's on the test and I'll answer it. No. Um, single slit I would say is more of a, uh, no more of the multiple choice for that. See, they, they, you just pulled it out. I'm giving you a freebie. 
So all the people who are not here and don't, and watch, don't the watch the video, you guys have a distinct advantage. Barely. Oh, please. I dealt with MSMS students today. You guys are nothing. So. <laughs> exactly. What? <laughs> all right. It, um, in the back. One, two, and three. No. Two. Do I what? Double slit, just generic double slit problem? So given the wavelength of 550 nanometers, within a specific range of plus or minus L, there are a total of bright bands of 17. The distance between the slits and the wall is 1.2 meters. The distance between the slits look on the problem set for a double slit problem and give me a fair give me a a reasonable number for the distance between the double slits like whatever i used in there i need a reasonable number no not that's l 0.1 okay 0.1 millimeter okay and to the msms students who are watching this i'm sorry uh <laughs> Because I basically told everybody there, yeah, I put all my videos on YouTube. Go have fun. Um, they get bored. They need stuff to do. Uh, one times ten to the negative four meters. Uh, now, it's a double slit. The number of bright bands is 17. What is the value of M? No. Answered with a moderate amount. You're still wrong, but I appreciate you. If there are 17 bands within a distance of plus or minus L. Work it. Work it. So the central band is zero. Then it's one, one, or three. Two, two, or five. Three, three, or seven. Nine, 11, 13, 15, and 17. So it's, it's eight. So the M for this is eight. A double slit. D sine theta is M lambda. What's the small angle approximation? The way that a double slit diffraction pattern shows up if I was to label these it's zero one one two two there's always an even number of non-zero maxima, and there's an odd zero maxima. There's only one. So the total number of bright bands are M times two plus one. Do I what? Well, I was drawing this, and then I got tired of drawing on the left, so then that's why I started just For the dark bands, the number of dark bands is two times M plus one. I gave you the number of dark bands. In this particular problem, I said there are eight, no, I, well, I didn't ask, say anything about the dark bands. All I said were there are 17 bright bands 
what's the value of L? Yeah, so you could just take 17, put it in there, solve for M, done. Small angle approximation means this. You have this. And then D L over big L is M lambda. So L is M lambda big L over little d. So this is eight. Hold on. It's small angle approximation. When theta is small, sine theta is equal to, or about equal to, tan theta. It's within reason. Yes? Why would you use a sine theta equals m lambda instead of what it was one half lambda? Because we're not dealing with destructive. We don't, we don't care about the normal lambda. We do. Not in this problem. In a double slit, in a double slit, bright is important and dark is important. In this particular problem, I only asked about the bright. Because you can technically figure out how many dark there are since you know that. I mean, now that I know what the bright is, M is 8. Eight plus one is nine times two is 18. So you could get that. Um, so L is this. I have to include that nanometer conversion because this is 550 times 10 to the negative nine. I'm sloppy in my handwriting, yes. Not necessarily. In this particular in this particular problem, I'm going to avoid the dark bands because I'm mainly aiming for L. If I gave you L and asked for the number of bright bands, you have to remember that the number of bands, you plug in the M's, whatever you get for it, and then round down because there is no fraction of a band. Typically, they are one number different, but you don't know is at the tail ends of this, is it bright and then dark or dark and then bright? You don't, I didn't take that into consideration for the problem. So that's why I only played with the bright bands. I didn't want to, I didn't want to step into that, that hole. Had I given you the... Could we work it on all the same way, but just using the destructive equation? Yes. Then I would use that. And, and then I would use D tan th M plus 1 half. Exactly. So whatever that number gives you. 5.28 centimeters. So from there out to wherever 8 is, is 5.28 centimeters. Um, who's got another? Poth. A convex mirror and a concave lens. Yeah, you can never get a real image out of those guys. It's impossible. Um, that's why object distances are always positive. Well, actually, no, I could take you, you in a compound lens, that concave lens will just create, will move the real image. 
So it can. Con concave lenses can produce a real image, but only in conjunction with a convex lens. But not by itself. Only solo lenses or mirrors will be on the test. Yes. We're not going to do a diffraction grading problem on the test. Yes. When you did that calculation, did you convert it to centimeters and then tell me, or was it 5.28 by itself? It's what? You converted it. He converted it. So it should, the calculated value you should get out of the calculator is 0 0.0528. Woo! It's a fun, fun day. Next. Thin film. Air, oil, water, coming right up. Here's the problem with this one. Um, to do this correctly, where the numbers are going to work out and the integers are going to be decent, I have to have a spreadsheet in order to get the numbers to work out. Um, traditionally, um, M1 and M2 for these equations are never greater than 5. So the, the units of the digits, or the not the units, the maximum value you can get for an M in a 214 test is going to be 5. I'm not going to give you an M of 38. That would be rude. It would be hysterical for me, but it would be rude. Um, let's, let's just set up the procedure. The for air to oil, do you want oil index of refraction to be greater than or less than that of water? Greater? Excellent. 1.0, 1.5, Low to high, phase change. High to low, no phase change. So there's going to be one phase change going on. So it's an odd. I'm going to say, do you want destructive or constructive? Constructive, excellent. So these two, I'm going to set both to be constructive. Um, will you always tell us like, whether it's constructive or destructive, or will you say what the lag is before you say? I will. I will either get. I will either say constructive, or I would say in the term in the idea of constructive, it would appear bright. It would reflect highly. Um, if it's dark, I would use words like absorbed. Appears dark. Uh, stuff like that. Now, this is an odd constructive. And if I'm guessing right, odd constructive is M plus one half times lambda over N. And what's the it's interesting, in the interview today, they go, well, what are the one of the things that you, re how do you encourage your students to learn? And I say, well, I encourage the students to learn the way that I learn through a little bit of discomfort. And so after making that mistake with the thin films problems uh, in those tutorials, there were two problems where I forgot my ends. And I basically sat over and walked over to your side of the room and just thumped my forearm causing a little bit of pain, which does, it is a con, people do that. When people are trying to remember things, they'll like slap them a little bit or something and it reinforces the memory. What do I know? I know you're taking that L and lambda and dividing by N. Now, we're not gonna get destructive. Don't go outside and find a switch and bring it back. No, that's not how we roll in this class. Violence is frowned upon. 
unless it's to pop stars. If you give me Rebecca's black head in an ice box, well, first off, I'll admit nothing and I'll say, I'll deny everything. Um, so, but I will look at that head with a great sense of satisfaction. So, I know. What happened to Rebecca Black? Coincidence? Hmm, perhaps. <laughs> so, what do, yes. Blood of Freddie Mercury? He's been dead, unless for like years. If you still have it, that's a little creepy. Because <laughs> you, you, what? So you have the blood of Freddie Mercury for a rainy day. I'm not saying Okay. So, all right, let's move on to more serious topics. What do I know about the thickness for Lambda 1 and Lambda 2? Oh, I'm thinking of somebody else, I think. Um, they're the same. So M1 plus 1 half, Lambda 1 over N is equal to M2 plus 1 half, Lambda 2 over N. The ends cancel. So the N, when I did those problems initially in the tutorial, there is nothing wrong about those M's. Those M's are rock solid. Solve for any of the variables. Do I solve for M1 or M2? Yes, you could do either one, it's the same thing. Yes? <laughs> because they're both traveling through the same film. Unless I draw two separate films, oh, that would be fun. Don't, no, don't suggest that. Because now there's a part of my brain working on that problem. Let it go. Just like Frozen. Solve for either one of the M's. All right, so I get this. Now, this is one of the things where I go, ooh, I'm gonna need some numbers. Um, I would set, well, really how I would do this. Let's say I want M2 to be two. That means this will be five halves. Yeah, I'm trying to, see, this is the one where I'm gonna need a spreadsheet for this. 200 nanometers, 400 nanometers. What? Yeah, give me, um, hold on. It has to be a constructive odd. This is a destructive, um, no, I need two thicknesses. Here's, this is, let me tell you how to do this. We don't need numbers, I'll tell you the procedure. You would plug in lambda two and lambda one and you would set up M2, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. You plug in M2 equals zero and you solve. If M1 is less than zero or M1 is a fraction, 
a non-whole number, then move on to the next. And then you would move M1 equals one. Do it again. M1 equal, or I'm sorry, M2 equals one. M1 is one half. All right, get rid of that. M2 equals two. M1 gives you one. Done. And then you say M2 is two, M1 is one, and then you would plug it in. Then you would use either of these two equations. And remember that N is in there. So that 2T is M1 plus 1 half, lambda 1 over N. So T is lambda 1 over 2N, M1 plus 1 half. And then you just plug in the M1 that you just got and the lambda one that I gave you, be sure to divide it by the index of refraction of the middle, which in this case is 1.5. So then you divide by 1.5, you got your answer, done. It'll always, yes, it is always the middle. The way that the solution is set up, it's always the middle. All right, we're down to 650, technically class is over. Any last words? Going what? Wear your red shirt. Send an email. I will send an email because I got to go over and upload this stuff. It'll be up in an hour. <laughs>